<laughs> hey, Lily, come here. Lily, look, look, look what we have. Look. Oh, even she knows there's a, there's something here. <laughs> Let's unbox this. Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and I'm a little bit excited for this right here because this is the Pixel 3a XL. My first return to a Google phone since the Nexus 6, so this is my first time getting into the Pixel lineup here. But let's go ahead and just do a quick unboxing here because I know this is what you all are wanting to see. So there's the side. Let's check out this other side here, the nice Google branding on the top. Already seen that as well too. And on the bottom it just has, you know, the uh, phone specific specifications. And this is the 64 gig XL model and it is the clearly white color. So let's go ahead. Oh, the very last thing here. I should show you all. Team Pixel. So yeah, let's go ahead, open these up and see what we have inside. Been a while since I've opened a phone, but oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so let's take this out. Wow. <laughs> and there we go. Nice clean screen. That is, that feels real nice. All right. <laughs> Everything looks fine on this as well too. I'm actually coming from a uh, OnePlus 3T, so let me even just kind of feel this compared to what I'm using right now. So there's the Pixel. Let me grab my phone that I have. And yeah, I mean, quick little comparison between the two. I know completely different phones, but this is pretty much what I'm used to. Pixel here. Yeah, this should be an easy enough upgrade. Very nice so far. All right, so we have the phone right here. I kind of want to still show that to you all. Keep it on the side. Let's see what else comes inside of this as well. So nothing inside there. Inside here, we have the uh, SIM card unlock. I believe it uses nano SIM for anybody who's interested. A user guide. So that's just going to go into the trash. A... Google and a Team Pixel little decal, so those are cool. And basic safety instructions. So again, I guess we'll just kind of throw those away. All right, what about for the cables here? Looks like we have a USB type C, type C adapter, is that it? Is that what it is? Yes, it's a USB type C mail to mail adapter here, cable. Interesting. Go ahead, open this up at least. Doesn't look to be all too long, but that's totally fine. There's an adapter here as well too, which what exactly is this for? This seems to be male USB type C to standard USB port. So that would kind of go just right here, for example. Just like these here would do about the same thing. Connect it up just fine and it works on either side of the phone. All right. So those are the adapters and cables we get. Now what else is in here? Looks like there's a little charging port here, or charging box. Here we go. All right. Oh, that is, hmm, okay. Not sure if I like that, to be honest with you all. I'll take that off. So this is a AC wall adapter to USB type C. So the idea would be you can plug this into your wall and then you plug USB T type C there and then you plug this in here. Come on. All right. Uh, huh. Okay. <laughs> so then what for this as well too, I, I'm not liking the cable setup so far. So for this, I guess if you want to hook it up to your PC, the idea is you plug in USB type C and then you need a male USB to female USB cable, which I'll be honest, like who really uses those? Like, I know if you're new to the channel, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty tech savvy and I have kind of a bunch of these cables. So I have at least a few of these, but you know, you 
certainly expect to have one of these on hand. This really all could have been better if it just came with a male Type-C to male USB cable, but I don't know, Google just wants to be Google with that, I don't know. I don't know, that that one threw me for a loop. The phone is cool so far, even though I haven't turned it on, but the cable is like, what, what are you doing, Google? <laughs> Maybe someone can explain it to me, but someone please explain the logic of this to me in the comments section, because I'd really like to know. So, okay, you know what, the cable mess out the way. Let's go ahead and turn on this phone, shall we? Let's see what we're looking at here. So, turn it on. I also like the, the orange there. Ooh, Google, all right. That screen is looking lovely so far, I can tell you that. All right, so while I'm going through the boot up here, I just want to also showcase real quick. Um, Google, this is, this is what many other phone manufacturers do. All right, look at this. This, this is my OnePlus charger, right? This is a big, giant, bulky USB thing, okay? Because this is a fast charger and everything. It's just female regular USB. This, Type-C male, USB type regular male. Plugs in right there. Awesome. No fuss on that. Guess what? If I want to hook up my phone to my computer, I have the cable right here. I don't need to I don't need to have this cable and I don't need to have this thing and well that's just to charge it or if I don't need to keep this on hand. I just I don't I really don't understand the logic there. I mean I'll use maybe I'll use the cable, I don't know, but that's about it. But it looks like thankfully at least OnePlus and many other manufacturers seem to do this right and logically, at least to me. Plus, this is red, which looks cool. So one thing I noticed that was interesting with the way they were, you know, kind of trying to sell you the cable and the adapter that came with this is if you're transferring from one phone to another. So I guess you're able to do that. That's nice and beneficial. Thankfully, I'm just going from USB Type-C to USB Type-C. So in this case, it does work. I've never tried this before, but we're gonna give it a shot. All right, so check it out, everyone. We're done with the transfer. Here is the uh, the old phone, the OnePlus 3T. And here's the new phone, the Pixel 3a XL. I mean, so far, the screen's looking nice. This all feels great. Uh, going through all that setup was a breeze on here, so. Took, you know, less than 10 minutes to get to this point, really. All right, so that's the unboxing. That's the first boot and everything. I'm just gonna let this thing update. I gotta situate, I gotta get it set up. You know how it is when you get a new phone, you gotta transfer everything over and all that other fun stuff. Even though I did most transfers, I just gotta make sure everything I like is on there and as is, so cool. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to be using this phone for hopefully at least a few weeks and I will let you know of my thoughts. All right, so it's been uh, just under three months, a little over two months, let's say. Let's say it's been less than three months that I have been using the Pixel 3a XL. And I want to give you all my thoughts on it. Now, for anybody that does not know, and if there's a lot of people that don't know, it's understandable. I don't do phone reviews that often. It's really, I, I do a phone review and I'm using that extremely lightly. I do a phone overview and kind of impressions and such whenever I get a new phone, which is generally every like two years or so. I'm really not a big phone guru or anything, so I'm not running tons of benchmarks or anything on these, but what is important to me is that I want to see how it just operates in regular everyday life. Uh, I rarely, rarely, if ever, play games on here. So, uh, and that's just phones in general. I'm just really not a mobile gamer, unless you count the Nintendo Switch, but because that's technically mobile hardware. <laughs> but getting into that here, my thoughts overall and impressions on the Pixel 3a XL. I have to say, for a phone which is under $500, this exact model, I can't speak on the Pixel 3a, but the 3a XL, the 64GB variant, uh, for this being $480 before any type of tax or shipping or any other extra fees, that is insane. Uh, to me, I absolutely love that I can come back to the Google lineup of phones, I guess you can say, because I want to talk about my history a little bit with phones here. Uh, the first Google type phone I had was the Nexus 4, which I enjoyed, but I outgrew that pretty fast. And I skipped the Nexus 5, but I went to the Nexus 6, which was the first expensive uh, Google phone, I would say. And for good reason, because they really did not hold back at the time, aside from maybe excluding a fingerprint sensor on there. 
So I loved the Nexus 6. I really enjoyed the phone on there and I loved having stock Google and I just didn't want to go to the Pixel. I would have liked a Pixel. The problem is they increased the price so high to the point where they kind of omitted me and several other people like me out there. Look, if there's people who want to spend $1,000 or close to $1,000 on a phone, uh, that is your money. You can do that. I really don't want to do that. I am not a super crazy power user like that. I'm not out here flexing, you know, like the latest $1,500 phone or something. I just need something that's going to work and work well and what I'm happy with. And my comfort zone, I, I will say, I'll put a number on it. My comfort zone is if I can get a phone unlocked, brand new, and complete for under $500, that's great. Because I don't do payment plans on my phones. I like to get them uh, from, you know, whatever manufacturer I can if possible. And I've pro purchased used before for friends, family members, what have you, and I've even recommended that. But just for myself, if I can get something straight from the people who create the phone and pay under $500 for it and get a unlocked option, uh, that would be optimal for me. So just kind of a one and done thing. So I was on the OnePlus 3T for a good amount of time, I would say. And I was kind of running into some issues here and there. Any type of ROM issues I ran into, uh, I did end up going to Lineage OS, which worked pretty well, I would say. Uh, but I was thinking, it was kind of in the back of my head, I said, you know, it would be nice to get a Pixel phone. Do I want to get the Pixel 2 because it has the headphone jack? I'm not sure. And then there was a lot of rumors of the Pixel 3a XL, and it came out, and I ended up grabbing one. So now let's now with that covered, let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on it. Overall, it is a fantastic phone. Now, the Pixel camera is no joke. And from what I understand, one of the bigger differences between, aside from price now, well, now the Pixel 3 is really going down in price and you can get one for cheaper than the 3A. But the big hardware difference on the Pixel 3 versus 3A is the 3 actually has hardware to process your images and such, which give it that nice, you know, kind of standard, I would say, Pixel or Google type of photo. Uh, the photos that I take on here or that I show people, the Pixel has now been out for long enough, like the original Pixel, and it's just, it's had this reputation, and it's been known for long enough at this point where people see my photos and they ask, oh, is that a Google phone or is that a Google camera or what is that? Or is that a Pixel of some kind? They already know just by looking at the photo what type it is. They don't know what type of phone exactly, but they know kind of where the camera comes from. So the difference on that is, from what I understand, the Pixel 3 does have hardware specifically to really give those images that extra processing and extra shine. The Pixel 3a does not physically contain the hardware for it, but it does it all on the software side. So that means you sit here, you take a photo, and you have to wait three to five seconds for it to be viewable with all the nice filters and such and processing on it. And that's totally acceptable for me. Out of the box, if you buy this brand new right now, it does it uh, does come with Android Pie or Android 9. And people who have been following the channel for a while might be shocked to hear about this. But this is the first phone I've had in so, 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 so long that I have not modified in any way. So my thoughts, I'm telling you all, this is still a locked bootloader. It is still the stock ROM and it does not have root on it. I have not modified this phone in any way because I want to see how the true performance of the phone without any modifications would be. And dare I say, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, there is there is only one thing I can talk about with the performance on it, and it is called the digital well-being feature. And this was actually mentioned several times in many other reviews, where they said, oh, well, you know, with the Pixel 3a, one of the things you will notice is because it has the slower processor, if you open up an app of some kind, it is going to open up a little bit slower than the Pixel 3, but once you're actually using the app, it's all good. And I can verify that that is true. But I can also verify that there is a way that you can resolve it, and it is within the digital well-being feature. Now, digital well-being is just a feature where it's kind of just not so much putting a limit on things, and you could have it give you warnings, as I understand, but essentially it can tell you, hey, you've spent this much time on Twitter, you've spent this much time on Instagram, you've spent this much time on YouTube, this is how many times you unlocked your phone this day, this is how many times you've done it over the week, like what would you like to do on this? So it tracks all of your activity on your phone and kind of just gives you a health check on it, so to speak, just to be like, hey, 
You're using your phone a lot. Just so you know. You're like, you spend like five hours on Twitter. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I love Twitter, though, honestly. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy my use of it. But either way, I did notice that if you turn off digital well-being, it seemed to resolve that issue completely. I really didn't have any issues with stuttering or what have you, but it seemed like the older Pixel phones, like specifically the Pixel 1, was having stuttering issues with digital well-being and even some battery issues as well too. But once a lot of Pixel owners turned off digital well-being, that seemed to resolve the issues. And for me, firsthand, I can say that turning off digital well-being seemed to completely alleviate the issue of, oh, you tap an app and it opens a little bit slower than it should. And is it a deal breaker? Not really. Is it super obvious? I would say if you're told about it and you look out for it, yes, it's obvious. And even my friend and I, like, he checked out my phone. He compared it to his. We did side by side. Sure enough, uh, we opened up the same app at the same time or more he did. And when we had digital well-being on this device, it did take longer to initialize and boot up the app. While as if we turned digital well-being off, it opened up noticeably faster. So that is one piece of advice I can give you all if you have a phone like this or just any type of pixel and you're really not using that digital well-being feature and you don't care for the data that it's providing to you, but you are running into some issues like I was talking about with stuttering, maybe battery life, maybe apps just are opening a tad bit slow. Uh, and this is after a fresh reboot as well. I'm one of those people, just for the record, I do reboot my phone on a daily basis. Generally, I wake up in the morning, I reboot it. Uh, due to the fact that I, I have just noticed, I have noticed that if I just keep my phone on all the time, it starts bogging down, it starts to have issues, and I just restart it. So a habit that I have. But either way, if that still doesn't resolve your app slowly opening issue, I'd recommend turning off digital well-being. Now, Google has also come out and said that this does not affect battery life or any type of performance like that. I beg to differ. Uh, I, I've had that. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen the comparisons. I've done the comparisons. I have felt the difference. Again, it's not a big deal breaker, but that's something that I could recommend changing. And I even waited, the reason why I waited so long to do this type of impressions is because when I get a phone and do a review such as this, I like to use it for a few months if I can. And the last time I did a video like this with my OnePlus 3T, people also really liked that. Because there could be issues that I complain about before the phone is even out, let's say. Like, let's say I got one of these as a review unit. I could complain about something and then it's resolved in a month or two, and even vice versa. My phone could be fine for a month or two and then there's an issue that crops up. Any type of issues like that I had, um, I would say the only, there were two issues, two software-based issues. One of them, when I first got the phone, for whatever reason on the YouTube app, I could not, and this is going to affect a limited amount of people, mind you, but I could not post to my story through the app on here. Uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't grab any photos and the camera would just show up as black. That was it. One time I got it to work, but aside from that, I couldn't do it. I noticed after a YouTube update, it seemed to work just fine. Another odd one I ran into is I use Android Auto and I actually have Android Auto uh, in my car. Like I have the actual dash and everything for it. And at one point I ran into an issue, there was not a recent update or uh, anything for Pocket Casts or Android Auto, but for about two days or so, regardless of what I did, I tried uninstalls, reinstalls, I tried so many different things, and regardless of what I did, I could open up Android Auto and everything was fine, and as soon as I would select Pocket Casts, Android Auto would crash. And then on my car, it would say connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. And it just kept doing that until I unplugged it and plugged my phone back in. And then if I went to the audio section, like I could be in maps, fine. I could be in phone, fine. I go to the audio section. If the last app that was pulled up was Pocket Casts, it would do the same thing. Now, what I did was I did end up emailing. It annoyed me enough that I, I emailed uh, the Android Auto development team and the podcast development team. Pocketcast did get back to me and they said, hey, next time this happens, can you please go here and essentially generate a crash log and send it to us? We'd love to take a look at it. And coincidentally enough, and there was no update that happened before, like, to, to introduce this feature or to get rid of it. But after I got that email, the issue seemed to go away. And I waited a few days and it went away and I emailed them back and I said, hey, thank you for your email. I really appreciate you following up with me. Uh, but the issue's gone. I don't know what changed. So... 
Something like that can happen. There was no app updates. There was no software updates. I'm not sure. I have had several OTA updates on here. The OTA updates, I do seem to get them just fine. Uh, within 24 hours of them releasing, I can just, you know, go to update my system and it pulls it down. It does the update procedure and it has those monthly security OTA updates, which is great. Navigating, uh, you know, navigating here has been just fine as well. I really like the app drawer setup here and all that stuff. I really like being able to go through and select everything. I, I can kind of show you, but just like select everything like that. It is a bit of a way of, I guess you can say, relearning how to navigate Android. But once you relearn it, uh, it is much more efficient than anything else. Um, I've already talked about the camera, where the camera I've been extremely happy with. Night mode has been absolutely fantastic on this. And the thing that people keep stressing about this is $400. Like, people will take pictures with the camera of either the Pixel 3a or 3a XL, and they're just like, guys, remember, this is a $400 camera right here. They kind of just lump the 3a XL into this, because really the main differences between the 3a and the 3a XL are you get a bigger battery on the 3a XL, and of course you get a bigger screen on here, and bigger form factor. And I've been totally fine with this. I do absolutely love that the headphone jack is on here. Uh... It could be, you could say it's a mid-range phone, but I'm going to be a mid-range user on that. And the thing that they really gun after is you're getting awesome, a like awesome flagship quality photos. You're getting a great flagship experience for a mid-range phone and mid-range price. And that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, now, when it comes down to any of the, uh, any of the other downsides that I could think of, I do have, no, I'll bring that up last. I, I do have some downsides I can talk about. First of all, when it comes to the fast charging, I wasn't too worried about this, and this is kind of a personal thing, uh, because I already had fast charging through the OnePlus 3T. In fact, I end up getting uh, one more of these here. This is the OnePlus 3T charger and cable that came with my phone, and um, I got a second one. And these things are kind of expensive, like 20, 25 bucks or so, something like that, uh, compared to, you know, regular chargers. And these worked great on the OnePlus 3T. Uh, they don't do, you know, the fast charging or whatever it's called. I don't know the exact name, but it's not compatible with this. You can charge your phone just fine, but it's not the same. So I'm back down to only having one fast charger, uh, which is fine. It is what it is, but I just thought it was a little bit annoying on that. Um, and then aside from that, I can't really think of anything else on this, honestly. I really haven't run into any other big issues. I haven't run into anything that I can really complain about on there, aside from maybe the only other thing, which again is kind of personal. The headphone jack is up here. I think it's a little bit odd where you will have your headphone jack there as opposed to kind of on the bottom. I prefer to have it on the bottom. And when it comes down to it as well, the speaker placement is a little bit weird. Just look at me. I'm saying that I don't have much to complain about and I'm talking about more stuff, but this is kind of my personal things. So headphone jack, I really wish it was at the bottom. Speakers, here we go. This is a speaker and this is a speaker. I really wish they were front facing. I wish they were a little bit louder, and also the screen, while as it is awesome and looks great, it doesn't seem to be bright enough all the time if you are out in public and there's just a lot of sun on it. So those are kind of about the only downsides I have on there. Maybe the maybe the last one, which I, I'm going to ask you all, and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this real quick. So check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and restart my phone. It is restarting. Let's wait a little bit. There we go. And it's rebooting. So I can wait a few seconds and it's going to reboot. Uh, that is just fine, but I'm going to show you possibly an issue I might have. And I want to know if anybody else who has a 3A or 3A XL or anyone who knows someone who has them has run into an issue such as this. So I did a reboot. Now I'm going to power off the phone completely. So it's completely off. And look at this. If I hold it down, hold the power button down, like, nothing's happening. If I tap it, nothing is happening. So I'm going to start holding it down, and I will show you. Okay, so now. There we go. Is it is it that normal for... Is, is that normal for it to ter take that long to even show anything off of a cold boot. I don't know. 
I have had some issues related to that on my previous phone, which I kind of attributed to the custom ROM. And this is just the stock ROM on here, so I'm not too sure on that. But if anybody could let me know, that would be absolutely fantastic. Now, the final thing I do want to talk about, which this is a big thing for me, is battery life, battery consumption. How is that? Um, I have, off of a single charge, going from 100 to about 0%, and even using the hell out of this thing, like using the Bluetooth, the GPS, and you know, just using the phone, like, especially the first week, you know, you know how it is, your first week you have a phone, your, your usage really spikes up, because it's a nice new toy, you have to get everything set up, and it's just, you know, real pleasure to use and such, um, I got over two days, over 48 hours worth of battery off of one charge, and on average, I seem to average about anywhere from 36 to 48 hours off of one charge. So let's just round up. Let's just say I get about two days worth of battery off of one charge. I can go just fine charging this thing every other day. And the nice thing is if you have, you know, the Google, um, the, the, you know, the charger that comes with the phone itself, if you ever have to charge quickly, you can just grab it, charge for 10, 15 minutes, and you're good for another eight or 12 hours, something like that, even with heavy usage. And I have waited, and I have been using you know, other OTAs and just seeing if the performance has gone up or down, and it seemed to be just fine. That is a huge, huge benefit on this thing. Huge. Absolutely love it. It's been great. Um, now, the fast charging... It is a little bit slower than I expected. Uh, it might take you two hours to do a full charge on there, which I was expecting it to be a little bit faster. I felt like it was on my previous phone. Uh, but one thing I also noticed is my previous phone, it would get quite hot when I did the fast charging on there. This, it really doesn't. Actually, this really doesn't get hotter than lukewarm for the most part. And I feel like that does have to do with the CPU that they chose, where it's not going to get super hot by any means. It seems to run everything quite well thanks to the optimization of just using, you know, clean stock Android, getting this straight from Google on here. And on top of all that, it just, everything just works. <laughs> everything just works real, real well. So... I've been happy for the most part with this phone. Um, aside from even like the, the complaints I have are really just nitpicks at that. But if you're looking, if, if you're in the market for something which is Android based, which is going to get, you know, some good long term support or even homebrew support if you decide to load a custom ROM or custom kernel or what have you on there, uh, and you want something that's going to last you a good amount of time, but you don't want something that really breaks the bank. I can't recommend this thing enough. Now, the Pixel 3a, I can kind of, I guess, lump in there and say, sure, if you want to spend a little less money and you want a smaller phone, that should be okay. I can just say, though, that these have been my experiences with the Pixel 3a XL or the Pixel 3 Axel, as it, some have lovingly called it, apparently. But this has been great. This is what I want Google to do going forward. They can do their really expensive pixels, and I'm all for that. I'm not going to buy them, but I'm all for that. But if I can get a mid-range entry, and it doesn't even have to be nearly as powerful, like let me keep the pixel camera and let me keep something like power-wise and power consumption, let me just have, and performance-wise, let me have something that's pretty good. All right, like I wasn't, this has been excellent to me, but I was expecting to get some that was like pretty good to great. And I will gladly pay for a cheaper build and a less powerful phone if it's going to be, you know, within that price range. Like again, I really don't want to pay $800, $900, $1,000 for a phone. I want to pay $400, $500. And if I can get a official offering like that from Google, that is great, and I am all for that. And especially the one thing that completely won me over was that headphone jack. So I'm one of those people, just a quick aside here, I don't support the headphone jack going away, and in my opinion, uh, I just always want the option there. I'm not against Bluetooth. I use Bluetooth almost every day, but I want the option to use the headphone jack, and I do use it almost every day. So the way I do it is I vote with my wallet. And for as long as I can, I am going to buy new phones which have headphone jacks whenever it is time for me to upgrade. So in two or three years, let's say, when I decide to get another phone, I am going to be on the lookout for something that would be awesome with a headphone jack. And hopefully, Google has a mid-range offering that is a fair price, you get a fair amount of power, it works well enough, and it has a headphone jack. And if they don't, that will be disappointing. But you can kind of even see it's kind of half in, half out, because again, it's up at the top, and also, the phone itself does not come with any headphones, so... 
that kind of almost speaks for itself. But either way, I think I've rambled on a lot enough about this phone. I absolutely love it. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're interested in grabbing one, I will have links down below in the description. And uh, this is one thing because people will generally ask me in regards to like the case and such that I use here. I'm just using a clear case. Uh, this one's okay. Uh, it gets the job done. It's just the circle here for the fingerprint reader is a little bit off center because I believe this was crafted up and made before the phone even came out. So it wasn't perfect. So now if you get one, it, I would hope it's better, but this is just kind of one of these clear cases. And then I end up getting here just a uh, tempered glass screen protector. They really weren't all that much. And I'll put the links down below in the description for the exact ones I got if you all are interested. But again, my final thoughts, if you are interested in getting a new Android phone and you want something with excellent performance that's not really going to break the bank, definitely consider the Pixel 3a XL. It is it's quite a beast for what it is, and I love this thing. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.